this is the setup. We have the single 833A tube here. We have the fan going in the filament at low power right now. Now, of course, this is all extremely crude, but here is the power coil which raises the potential to a significant magnitude. And then we have the tank capacitor there. And of course, this transformer coil isn't impedance match, nor is it frequency match to these to this combined set of extra coils, but it's it will produce some interesting results. And here, based on Dollard's design, the two potential coils are facing inwards, thus creating a zone of cancellation. And then we have the current coils on the outer skirts of the setup. And from this, this is connected to the high potential, high transform, oh, high voltage transform coil. And in this zone, the cancellation spot or the zone of counter space varies. So we'll show this with the fluorescent tube. And then of course, these bulbs down here are of carbon filament design. And these will instantly respond to the initiated power. So let's turn on the power now. Okay, the lights are off. Now I will turn the plate on and we'll slowly increase the filament power. Now as I do this, the RF emitted by the coils shall illuminate those bulbs near the bottom center. So the brightness of the tube is increasing. And now the tubes are illuminated. And right now the filament power is at roughly 8 volts at 10 amperes. So we shall increase it now to 10 volts. And now we can see the formations in the bulbs appearing. And of course there's arcing which can't really be avoided. Now the interesting part is that this arcing will tend to arc into any type of insulating material. So this includes any surrounding wood, vinyl, or plastic and ABS on all there it goes. Okay, well the wires have been elevated and as you just saw, the sparks burn through the vinyl insulation which shouldn't be happening. And of course this one down here is wanting to arc to this plastic table, but it's out of reach. Now let's go into the zone of activity. Now we can see the bulbs are illuminating. And as we move closer, hopefully the RF doesn't damage the telephone. These carbon bulbs are acting upon the emanated RF and as we can see that their shape differs and transforms according to the cancellation zone. So the cancellation zone is about right there and if we move it around you can see that its shape changes as well. Now of course the camera can't exactly pick up the true colors being uh, created by this bulb, but nevertheless, it's more of a sky blue turquoise color. And it, of course, it depends upon the evacuation pressure of the bulb. Now we can place it down there. And if we take this other bulb, and we move it about the center, we could still see these plasmas occurring. And if we bring it closer to the bulb, there are these lines which start appearing in the bulb, and of course these are corresponding with the actual lines of force surrounding this coil. Now if we bring it closer, we could see them moving, and if we turn it, we could see it sparking. And what's also interesting is there is this gap between the bulb now if I move this lamp sideways we could see that there is a almost a tunnel appearing between the bulbs now this is similar to what a wormhole would look like as depicted in most drawings and here if I could get a better close-up we could see these moving lines that they're wobbling and of course moving it about the coils changes this. If I bring it near the coil. Now to demonstrate this actual 
zone of counter space occurring. I'll take this fluorescent tube, which hopefully the camera will adjust. And if I move it about, we can see that there's this dark spot moving up and down the bulb. And there's significant arcs which could be drawn off the coils, the potential coils. And if I flip the bulb vertically, this dark spot should be more evident. It's right there. Camera can't really pick it up that much, but if I bring it closer to either side of the coil, it becomes brighter and the RF intensity, of course, makes the bulb extremely hot, so I can't hold it for long, but the dark spot is right there. It's concentrated, and of course, if I bring it away from the coils, it could be seen again, which is, it's about right there. Potential coils and respectively the current coils further back because the the inverse occurs with these coils at the center does not become as concentrated unless they're further apart from each other. And of course this also affects the distance to which you can light a fluorescent tube. So decreasing coupling between the coils incidentally allows for us to eliminate the fluorescent bulb further away or increases the overall RF field intensity. So here we have a, a third carbon bulb on a stick so that to reduce the amount of hand capacitance present and moving it near the coils of course increases the field intensity. And moving it back so that to examine the point of cancellation it occurs about right there where that small formation is occurring. Now let me see if I could zoom in on this camera. Okay, there we go. I'm moving it about. There are these comet-like formations occurring near the filament. And of course, the they're not solely dependent upon the filament, but the filament nevertheless creates a type of boundary that allows for the positioning of these plasma cloud formations. Now, of course, in person, this bulb formation is far more spectacular than what's being witnessed on the, t on the phone, because the phone can't really pick it up. But there is the cancellation zone right there. And if I hold it in, hold the bulb long enough in this position, then these formations start to move. They start to bounce around and wiggle. And another test is to take this, also an ordinary carbon lamp, which hasn't been worked in the field as long, so it emanates more of a purplish color, but if I bring it near the potential coils, we could get a small amount of incandescence to occur just through the RF heating of the filament. And if I can't really hold it long enough because this RF field is so intense that it starts creating heat, immense heat on the glass, enough to really burn your skin. And if I apply, press it against the coil, nothing happens. It starts to overload the plate of the tube, but the incandescent occur incandescence occurs upon not direct contact, but indirect contact with the potential coil. And if I move it around, see these lines occurring, the, these lines which move and are most concentrated and most spectacular near this zone of cancellation. And again, this wormhole shape or figure occurs when these two fields interact or combine with each other at that point right there. So if I zoom in on the bulb, right there. And of course, bringing it near, the coil in between doesn't do much, but it does become more concentrated right there in the zone of activity, or at least activity in respect to the fluorescent bulb, but really with these bulbs, 
it's the most zone, the greatest zone of activity, that is. And this plasma likes to be bounded near the filament, but then also likes to stray away from it. Hopefully I could get the camera at a right angle, but moving it, moving the bulb along the coil, there are these two half spheres which fill either side of the bulb. And moving them around, they start to turn and then orient themselves with the zone of cancellation. So right there, let me see if I could get a better shot. Okay, well here is a top view or a side view of the bulb, and right now it's on... Yeah, well, it's near one of the potential coils, or the rightmost coil, and if I start moving it around, you can see the formations which occur as I move the coil around, and here in this gap in the zone of least activity, that's when the most spectacular formations occur. And of course, orienting the bulb and orienting its filament creates different formations, respectively. And this video will demonstrate the formations and the differences in the zone of least activity and the zone of most activity. So here we start off with one side of the potential coils and we move towards the center where the zone of cancellation occurs, which is at that point right here. And this is when we get all the interesting formations to occur, very ghostly formations. And then we move away from it and we go to the other side of the coil and we get the same result as the other side. Moving it away, that's when we get these wormhole shape formations. So it's shown, this is a visual representation of the actual fields coming together. So at that point right there, that's when the counterspatial collapse occurs.